like, I'm like, okay, I want to record more vlogs because I want to get better at talking because, like, even though I'm way more comfortable listening to myself talk now because I just don't care, I, I still have this feeling of, I'm not good enough. I, I'm not the guy that I mentioned earlier who can just talk all the time and always have ideas and never run out and be in hours and hours of content in your sub bill, in your sub box. Because really, that's the type of person on YouTube I look up to most. That's the type of content I enjoy the most. Just the person who can never run out of stories, can never run out of interesting ideas, and can keep going and being interesting forever. Um, and, and have a giant playlist. And basically, Digi is what I'm describing. And, you know, a few other adjacent people. Um, you know, that that's what I really aspire to be. And I think... I finally come to terms with making all of these videos is helping me get there because I can see the pro progress in a material sense uh, so much so that it's given me the confidence to realize okay I'm fine with doing this and I'm enjoying it too uh, because the the progress is there it, it's sort of like with drawing where when you start out drawing you're just terrible and you hate yourself so much because everything you draw is terrible uh, but you start to see little bits of progress then you're like okay I'm making progress you're not completely confident in what you're doing yet but eventually that progress sets in enough to motivate you a bit more and then you finally get in the full confidence stage of being like okay I, I'm doing this and I don't care what it looks like because I can see the improvement unless you're Tommy Oliver yeah. oh okay yeah, uh, I sort of see that to some degree. I feel like with doing videos, like, I, I feel that for all the other aspects except for the talking part. The fucking, like, okay, I can write scripts pretty good, and I can see myself getting better, and that's appreciable. That changed it. Oh, that's a, it's enjoyable. I enjoy the process. I enjoy the physical process of writing. The fucking, the editing process. Though sometimes a bit monotonous, I enjoy the, yeah, you do interesting things, you do cool stuff, it looks good, it looks fun. I can say, yeah, appreciable improvement, appreciable getting better at this. With the speaking, is just, no, this is just bad, this is painful to do. There's progress, but I, the physical act of practice is agony. Well, yeah, that, that's what I mentioned with, uh... Um, and I can't wait to die. Being in that sort of middle stage where you're seeing the progress and it's giving you a minutia... In, in some people's cases, even smaller than a minutia, but, you know, the, the confidence is growing a little bit. And eventually, when you just get through it so much so that, that you can gain more of it, you do eventually just become a lot more numb to, to the, the feeling, and you're like, okay, I'm at a good spot, I'm in good zone now. Of course, if you just hate speaking in general, it, you're, you're not going to totally feel that. I'm someone who has a deep passion for talking all the time, so it's uh, it's something that I'm obviously going to be more privy towards trying to do and enjoying, um, so it's it really depends on the nuance of your situation. Yeah, uh, I feel like I'm not suited to speaking. I have spent weeks of my life saying less than a full sentence. It's a... Uh, it's not something I'm naturally inclined towards doing. But, uh... that, that's very different for me because all throughout my life, like all throughout, for as long as I can remember, my parents have always just told me to be quiet because, or my family in general, because I never stop talking. I just talk all the time. So um, my, my family really does not like that very much. They, they used to get really, really annoyed by it when I was younger. Like, like, to the point of just hating it, because I would talk all the time, and and just never stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, no, that's, that's, that's good. But, uh, it's all about fucking the, the balance of, of natural inclination and uh, other things and, and and what you need to practice at and, and what you get. And what you, fuck, I'm saying nothing. I'm just saying fucking nothing. Oh, God, help. Let me out. I'm terrible at this. YouTube was a mistake. Oh, God, I can't go back. I can't go back. Help. Ah!
<laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, the thing with that is, um, like, improvement is obviously important, but I think where someone like Pagan Reagan totally fails at, at the, the idea of improvement as God or whatever is that you have to have a, a sort of natural inclination to things to enjoy it in the first place. Like, if you don't enjoy the thing, why are you doing it in the first place? And second, if you don't have sort of a, a natural talent for things, you have to assess, okay, is this something that I really want? Is there, like, a semblance of a desire or some kind of out, outer element that makes me um, able to do this thing? Or at least have, you know, like a fun interest thing in it. Like, a, you know, context. It's a, a context thing. Like, like I said, with me talking all the time, for as long as I can remember... It, you can say, okay, the, these sets of experiences have made me this way, so I am more privy to do this thing called YouTube talking all the time. And then, because that enjoyment and natural inclination is there, I'm more likely to practice and uh, practice with less wanting to die, although the wanting to die is still there. So, um, it, yeah, like, it, if you're... If you're doing something like, for example, Pagan Reagan, where he's trying to draw, and he's not someone who I think is naturally, like, has a thing for drawing, or anything around him that would get him to do that, or, for example, just making art in general, but he tries to do it so much, and it upsets him so much, and he's, like, for years, he's just constantly been down that rabbit hole of feeling bad about it, and not being able to achieve his dreams because he's going after the wrong dreams. He he can't be the artist guy because he's not that guy. He needs to practice and feel bad about something that he is inclined to do. And for some people, that's nothing. And uh, for those people, I do feel legitimately bad for them. Yeah, uh, yeah. I you know, for me, it's just a case of YouTube is the the thing that makes you want to die least. It's just a case of there are parts of it that. Oh god, mostly the speaking. Mostly the words part. The parts where you take these words from a paper or from your head and make them into the sounds. That's a really bad. Oh god, let me die. I, I mean, in... If there was some way to skip that component, I would be the best YouTuber. I, I mean, in, but, uh, in this case, I, I think that... I mean, I wouldn't, but you know, I'd be okay. The only solution to that is to uh, just... Uh, go through it all because you obviously enjoy and are good, very good, at all the other things. So it's like, okay, you just have to muscle through this tension here and eventually, through the struggle, through that struggle, get better at that thing. You know, I've had to do that with writing because I absolutely hate writing, but because I wanted to be yeah. this guy who makes lots of content and who speaks a lot, I struggled through writing until I realized, oh, wait, I don't actually have to do this. Um, so, uh, yeah. Like, uh, luckily for me, my situation was less complicated than that. It wasn't like a literally required thing for YouTube. But for you, it is. So I, I think you're going to hate it, but you you will, you know, uh, you get better in <laughs> time or not. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, but I, I don't know, just put more focus into all of the other stuff that you like and are good at, which I think you do anyway, but, um, you know, it's it's always, I in my personal opinion, just based on the experience of, uh, I've had, I think it's best to just focus on the things you're inclined towards, because everything else is a hellish nightmare. Yeah. Life's pretty shit. <laughs> Fuck life. Oh, God. Can't wait to die. It's, I mean, it's it's why uh, Digi's vlog where he's talking about um, how you know you you can't be Casey Neistat or whatever you can't be him um, or whatever. Nor should you be, or you should just be yourself or whatever. I, I don't remember the name of the vlog, uh, it, but it, it was it was a, a good point, you know, and that that's a point that resonates with me very strongly. And, and Pagan, like, he mentioned that video at one point. He was like, oh, yeah, I, I hate that video so much. It legitimately makes me angry. You know, and I'm, I'm just thinking, that's the problem here. That's why you're upset, is because you're taking the blue pill and you can't realize that, that your dreams are a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When are we going to solve Digiva? 
When are they going to come up with a solution to this digivote problem? In what way? Uh, <coughs> the Digibro has ruled the banking system for too long and has ruined the German economy. Frankly, we need to put the Digibro into ghettos, at the very least. Yeah. And in the long term, I think we start need to we start need to think about you know getting them out of the country, lowering their uh, their 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 legal their legal rights, and eventually we're going to need a, we're going to need a final solution to the Digibro problem. Yeah, we need to sanction Digibro. You know they've they've got they've got all of that human content oil there. We we if we sanction them, we'll we'll cut off all of their main resources, and uh, we'll win the war. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's just kill Digibro. <laughs> let's go and kill Digibro. In let's go on an excellent adventure to Rochester and kill a man. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but that's my husbando you're speaking. About. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're fucking again. <laughs> oh boy. That was that's a weird that's a weird situation. That's a story for another let's play. <laughs> I, that's good content. I'm saving <laughs> that. Oh, <boy. laughs> okay. Of course, of course. Gotta gotta keep that himself. Yeah. Yeah, gotta keep that for the and actual good let's plays like the uh, the other ones we did. Although there were there were some good conversations in this one. It was mostly just internet problems that made it bad. I think without the internet problems, it probably would have been good. Yeah, it's 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 been a bit of an issue. That's uh not great, but oh well, that's okay. Outlaw Harvest fans don't have standards anyway. They'll watch anything. Yeah, they're they're really the best fan base on earth in my opinion because they're mine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're listening to this right now, so you know. Make shill videos to get people to watch weird stuff. Yeah. Nah. So trying to mix around your audience like that is is kind of a struggle. Uh, nah. I've had this issue because I've of course got the whole uh, half of my stuff is Warhammer 40k content, the other half is utterly impenetrable madness. That's one of my favorite things about your channel. Because it's almost like everything is just on the main channel, which for me is the most admirable thing in the world. It's, uh, it's something. It's, it's, it's a real, it's a real, real conundrum. But hey, uh, that's okay. That's fine. It's okay that I'm doing YouTube horribly. It won't be a problem. Everything is going to be okay. Don't panic. Yeah, if, if only I could be a full-time YouTube boy <laughs> over making the type of content I want to make whenever I want, and not having that be, a, you know, a risk uh, and impossible to happen in the first place. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Oh boy. I wonder if we could all have the Mr. Cynical lifestyle, where he just seems to have the ability to just make YouTube videos for 20 hours. Yeah, I don't understand him. <laughs> he is a literal conundrum. Like, it hasn't... Yeah, he just seems to have... Mm. Yeah. Ah, uh, is that... Is that... I, it's, it's weird, because, like... Yeah, what a... <laughs> what a go on here. You know, that's that's sort of the existence I wish I had at one point, because there's sort of a dichotomy with me. Is like I have two ideas of people that I want to be, because if I, you know, lived, you know, completely on, uh, I don't know, money from the government or something, or if I lived with someone else paying for me, and I didn't have to worry about the moral problems with that, if someone was just like, okay, I will pay for you to live, and it will not be a problem. I mean, I would still worry about that morally. I'd still, like, feel guilty a lot, because I feel guilty just from taking gifts from people. 
but like that would be serious thing. Um, but like without any of that in mind, like like if if um, if if I were to to do something like that and just be able to do whatever I want, on one part it's a nihilistic nightmare because I I'm all alone and I'm just doing this thing which eventually gets old if you do it all the time if you do enough of anything it eventually gets old um, and it you know it basically becomes the uh, the last days that Digi was living at his old house when he finally got tired of the lifestyle he was living where he was just completely depressed you know I've sort of had that experience with um the way I used to work my main channel and all of the channels in general you know I would record a ramble cast I would make main channel videos, or not, and then feel bad about that, repeat. You know, the lifestyle was kind of cool and satisfying for a while, but then it got old and I realized all the problems with it. I feel like if I did the full-on, okay, I have all this money, mm. I have, I'm completely taken care of and I can just do whatever I want, I would eventually get tired of it, and I would, would eventually need to move to something else and find more variety. So that would be a problem. And then the other romanticized lifestyle I have is like being a teacher because I want to help kids out and all that because I, I'm a, a, a nightmare who needs to interact with people. Um, uh, so it's, you know, it's, it, teaching's cool, man. History, history is really the GOAT. Like, the more I learn about history, I've always thought it was the GOAT for as long as I can remember, but like, lately it's been even more the GOAT. Uh, but yeah, it, it, teaching is a cool lifestyle that I find respectable and nice. So those are the two things. Two, two things that are completely diametrically opposed and completely different, and both of which I find issues with, as with, you know, any type of life or whatever. So it's like, oh, yeah, what do I do? Help, let me out. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nihilistic suburban void. Uh, well, luckily, I don't get depressed. But I am. That's okay. I used to because I'm, you know, medicated with uh, medication, so it's like, okay, I'm pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with autism pills. Ooh. Yeah, it's the uh, it's it's that grass, man. It's that it's that California grass. Oh Lord! <laughs> Trial of the dank weed vote, that mayor. Yeah, if only Hunter S. Thompson won that election. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No reference. Ah uh, well, what a, what a terrible shame. Uh, I I get that fucking deep thought. <laughs> <laughs> that weird. <coughs> Uh, weird, deep Hunter S. Thompson history. I, I need to read Hunter S. Thompson. What a hero. He seems hilarious. Uh, I need to read his books. My my dad absolutely loves the film of uh, the Las, Las Vegas something, something about the, the show with Hunter S. Thompson in Las Vegas. The movie that has... Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? In Las Vegas, that's it. Um... My my dad and my mom absolutely adore that movie. They think it's like one of the best films ever made. I don't think I've ever watched it. I think I've seen like a couple minutes of it when it came out, or some or not when it came out when they bought it on DVD. Uh, but like I, I saw like a couple minutes of it, uh, but I've never actually watched the film and I never read the book of it either. I need to read Hunter S. Thompson's books. So many books I need to read. I just need to read books, more <coughs> books. Yeah. That, I realized that today. I I started reading a book and I realized I've got to stop reading this book because this is the third book I'm now a chunk of the way into. Oh, God. No. Please. Help. Let me out. I need to finish some of these goddamn books. I'm I'm the worst kind of multitasker. Where I'll, I'll be doing ten things at once and nothing gets finished. Oh, God. I, I need to do all the things. I need more time. I can just dedicate myself to one thing usually unless... Uh... You know, I, my interest goes off into another thing, which d doesn't happen too much. It really depends. A lot of the time, I make the choice for my uh, whatever to go off into something else because I'm, I I will just say, okay, I don't want to be working anymore, and then I'll watch like 
a bunch of 80s anime OVAs for like two hours, and then I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna go eat for a while and listen to the pub crawl, and then I'll work a little bit more, and then I'll go to bed. Yeah, I know. My problem's always just it's media that you can't just consume in one like big thing. Like you, it's most books are too long to just sit down and consume this whole book in one sitting. Mm. Yeah. Which is, uh, it's a real problem, but, uh... I, I don't like reading books in one... Because that's, that's how I want to do things. I want... Mm. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I just said I don't like reading them in one sitting. Yeah, I, I, I thought that's my ideal. I want to just be able to, to just sit down and just do a thing until it's done. Like, that's... I've put this a few times, like, just, that, like, the most satisfying thing for me is when I can just spend, like, fucking... Eight hours in one day, just making an entire video start to finish from script, reading it out, editing the audio, putting it into the video, making and editing the video, and uploading it all in one day, just in a massive fucking fugue state of work. That's the optimal. That is the ideal life experience, but uh, it's hard to just get eight hours where you, when you can just do a thing uninterrupted. How much of that is the desire to do that, and how much of it is I enjoy doing this? Is is the real question, in my opinion. I know. For me, it's always just a matter of momentum. You know, it's once you get into the rhythm of it, because there's, there's the thing. For me, making videos is the most satisfying thing. It's just the case of you need to get into the rhythm of it. If you're not in that, then it's, start, it's, it's always it's starting the process isn't that easy. It's, it's a case of... Okay, it takes a while to get into the into the into the feel of this, get get build your momentum up, and that isn't fun. But once you've got to that state, then this is the only thing that makes life worth living. Yeah, and it's, just, it's just getting there and having the time to get there and having the time to stay in that state. Yeah, I I can definitely see that. 